Hey there, ladies and gents. Um, whilst, again, out and about on YouTube, uh, watching various videos, having some fun, um, it popped into my head again about another idea, is, well, why can't or has there not yet been the combination of various engines and their functions? So I have combined the rhombolic engine with a flame eater. Been, it's a sterling, it's quite sterling there. So generally, uh, that's the rhombolic drive. It may not be accurate, but it pretty much looks like a rhombolic drive. It's two gears that counter rotate. Uh, the back one is a single rod that goes through the front one. Uh, the back rod is connected to the displacer piston. Uh, the displaced piston works like it would with a rhombolic engine, uh, moving the air back and forth, uh, which helps change its temperature and makes the engine work. But in combination, it also closes the top valve, which is just a hole, basically, uh, as it goes forward. So it closes the valve, which um, has the hot air in there, and that's under heat. Uh, that will cool and act as a vacuum, sucking the whole thing forward. As that happens, um, the displacer piston will move back, reopening the flame valve, uh, which will enable it to suck in the air again as it goes round and continue its cycle on. Uh, as far as I can tell, rhombolic driven Stirling engines are pretty damn efficient. Uh, more often than not, it shows that they're running at very high speed, very powerful, and able to actually do work. Um, I've just gone off track there. So the front one is a hollow tube, which is connected to the working piston. And, uh, well, that would uh, work, doing its thing. Here I've got heating fins. Uh, which the hot air would be shifted from the front down to the back and it will cool and that would um, well cool and contract the air when you know to make it do work but when it's contract contracting yeah compacting cooling condensing when the hot air is condensing the valve is shut which makes it do work bringing it forward uh, giving it momentum which then opens the valve again as the engine is moving back and that would suck in the air. And now the reason that I've done this combination is because normally there would be a heated cap where the hot air inside would expand and contract. But it would have to conduct through the metal, conduct through the air and do the work. Now they're pretty efficient as they are, but now that I've got an open valve, I'm sucking in direct fire. So it's even more heat, air is just going straight inside. There's no, it doesn't have to conduct through it. Um, again, this is an idea. I may be completely and utterly wrong, which is fair enough, in how the, this will affect a rhombolic system to function, because again, it was worked in a vacuum chamber, but I am creating an artificial vacuum when I close the valve with the uh, displacer piston. Um, so, as I'm not, again, I may be completely wrong, but I don't think that this should not work. Um, so yeah, this is the idea, a flame-eating, uh, rhombolic-driven Stirling engine. Uh, don't know how more efficient it's made. I don't have the means of making this, which is one of the worst things about coming up with ideas, is I have lots of ideas, but no ability to machine them, uh, create them, develop them, patent them, <laughs> generally. <clears throat> so, yes, uh, that's the idea. Thoughts and comments. All right, guys, uh, see you later.